This meeting is being recorded. Ooh, let me double check something and make sure. No, it is. So this is going to the right place. I'm always nervous because sometimes it records and sometimes it doesn't, but welcome everybody. My name is Lori Hookham. I'm the director at Wilson Public Library and Today we are having a community chat and we're so happy to have Pam Wrights here. She is the director of the charitable fund of COZAD, which some of you might know formerly as United Way, but you are now the charitable fund of COZAD. You have been for about four years. Four years. And I guess we'll just start off chatting by having you tell us a little bit about how you changed to United Way, from United Way to charitable fund of COZAD. Well, in 2020, United Way was making a lot of changes to how they were operating. Um, and they were changing their dues structure. So our dues was going to double from 1500 to 3000 And it was a flat 3000 um, the bigger United Ways, their dues structure was going to a percentage of their campaign. But if your campaign wasn't big enough, then it was a flat 3000 regardless. Um, so, and there was a bunch of other changes coming along. So the board decided at that time that it was not in our best interest to remain a United Way. And so they voted to leave the United Way. So I... Um, notified the United Way that we would be leaving and we had 30 days to stop using the United Way name and everything that we had branded that said United Way had to be destroyed or returned to United Way. Um, about the same time COVID hit and we had had a plan, the board had had a plan to have a community naming contest and include the kids from the school and come up with a new logo. Well, schools were closed down, businesses were closed down, so we had to punt. The board had to come up with a name and then we worked with um, Mr. Botts um, to come up with our new logo. And so they tried to be considerate of not naming it something but the same CC, CCS, you know, and so that's where we came up with charitable fund of COZAD. And that's what we've been since 2020. Um, so we've been in existence since 1982. Um, and and what, what do you do? I mean, I'm, I'm going to ask these questions like I don't know anything about you. I do know some things about um, the organization, but what do you do for COSA? So we partner with um, other nonprofit organizations, and in order to partner with us, they have to be a nonprofit, um, and they have to serve COSA. Not all of the agencies that we partner with um, are located in COSA, but they have to serve the community in some form or fashion. And we have five internal organizations that are administered by my board that we raise money for as well. What are those five? Um, we do the Wilson um, Human Building Services Building, which is where you're located. That's where we're located. And that's helps with the upkeep of the building um, if we need any repairs or things like that. Um, we have the COSA Heart Fund, which is used, we've used it before to buy um, equipment for doing CPR classes, AEDs for the school, those kind of things. We also have a discretionary fund which is used for emergency medical expenses to help people who have an emergency medical situation. Um, they have to prove that they have an emergency 
and that they have doctor's appointments that they have to go to. Uh, it's also used for things like the dot books that we give out to kindergartners every year in um, conjunction with the library, which we're doing that on Friday. That is one of my favorite things that we do every year. Um, and then we also have the kidney fund, which provides uh, gas money for people who are going to kidney dialysis. And then we have the cancer fund that provides money to people from COSAT that have a cancer diagnosis and are receiving treatment. Those are the five internal ones. So uh, people with kidney issues or cancer issues or heart issues, if they would like to know more information, would they just contact you? The heart fund doesn't help people. It was set up a little bit differently. It was set up just to provide um, training materials or heart related like the AED equipment to help out in the community. Um, but people who are going through kidney dialysis or have cancer, uh, they just need to reach out to us and then we can get them some assistance. And then, so we'll go back to the heart. If they have heart issues and they're going to the doctor, then we can go through our discretionary fund and they just have to bring me doctors. Well, I'm going back to the heart to like AED. You said uh -huh. that that fund helps buy AED machines for the school. Would that also buy AED machines for other businesses who are interested? Any business that wanted an AED, they could reach out to us. So same thing, they mm -hmm. just need to reach out to you. They need to reach out to us. Uh, we reached out to the school a few years ago um, and offered AEDs. Um, We've talked about doing that again with the new um, addition and stuff to provide some more AED equipment up there. Well, I was just thinking off the top of my head, I didn't know if churches had AED machines or not. That's a good question. Maybe I need to work with the ministerial association. We're okay. meeting today before. Okay. I need to see you guys anyway. Okay. That's just, I know that like when you do CPR training anymore, the first question is go get an AED machine. So, you know, we have one at the library, but I don't know how many businesses have AEDs. You know, that's it. Do you just work with nonprofits then for those AED machines or no, anybody? Anybody in the community. Okay, that's, right. that's great. We did some of this new pool up there. Trying to remember where I'll be. But just off the top of my head, I was like, I just wonder if you have them at the churches. No, nope, that's a good question. What else do you do? So those are the, well, those are four. No, those are five. 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 Um, but do you do anything with the food pantry since it's also yes. located in the The depot. food pantry is one of our agencies that we support. Um, so you're, it's not like under you, it's just something that you support. You're not in charge of that. We're not in charge of that. It's totally a separate entity. Um, you just shared the building. We shared the building. We rent that space to them. Um, but we partner with them we, and we fund them. Um, because they're in the building, I do serve on their board, so I attend the meetings. Um, I think I'm through the whole list of the agencies that we. I think it would support. be good mm -hmm. for people to know what agencies you do support because you are in the process of doing your fundraiser right now. Yes, correct? we are. Yes, yeah. we are. Um, after zone and i serve on the advisory board for them as well as because we're one of the major sponsors or donors um commodities that's through um community action partnership out of Kearney, and they bring commodities for individuals or husbands and wives they have to be over 60 so usually it's not a family they bring commodities to the Grand Generation every other month. And those are food boxes of shelf-stable food products. They brought some to our last um, budget hearings, and it, they get quite a bit of food for that. Um, the food pantry we already talked about, um, Head Start, uh, Dawson County CASA, and if you're not aware of what that program does, CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocate. 
and they provide volunteers that um, support foster children and are their voice in the court. Um, our funding goes to help the training for the training of those volunteers. Yeah, we had them here maybe maybe a couple months ago for a program because they are in need of volunteers here. They are in need of volunteers. Yes. Um, when they tell you the numbers of kiddos, um, I thought this had it on here. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't have it, but the number of kiddos that are in foster care can blow your mind. L2 for kids, and I have one of their flyers up here. Um, if you don't know about them, they they provide funding for children. They have to apply through the churches, but they buy new school clothes for the kids. Each kid has X amount of dollars, and then they're allowed to go shopping and pick out their own clothes. And they have some guidelines so that they're school appropriate clothing, um, but that's something so that those kids go to school with new clothes. And that's all ages of school? All like K school. K 12 mm -hmm. or preschool through yeah. Yeah. Um, our funding, they, they served over 100 kids in those at our funding paid for 30 of those kiddos. Um, the Grand Generation Center. Um, COZED Youth Rec, um, COZED Child Care, the Parent Child Center, they're located in Lexington, and they serve families with um, domestic abuse and things. Um, well, they have a safe house, or they did have a safe house, they don't anymore, but they put up families if there's a need for that. Um, FAN, which is in Carnegie, and they serve families or individuals who have been victims of sexual assault. And they have a center in Kearney, and they, they provide a place where that victim can go and be interviewed. And they sit in a little safe room, and they're able to connect with law enforcement and whoever else that needs to be there so that child or victim only has to tell their story one time. Um, homes, and I have a flyer for them up here as well. This is out of Lexington. And what they do is they provide furniture, household goods. Um, it's all donated. And they have a storage unit in Lexington. They deliver to Coza, they help set it up. But all they have to do is reach out and say, we have a need, and then they'll, they'll work on getting that furniture or whatever they need to their house and help them um, get it into their house. Uh, they're through, they work through Calvary Assembly of God Church in Lexington. That's their contact number. And then they get a hold of the volunteers who oversee that um, program. And then Dawson County Family Partners and uh, something that they've just uh, put together. I am the office for Dawson County Family Partners. Um, we serve families in Dawson County. Um, we have served some families in Gosper County because they don't have anybody there. Um, but if they need help paying their rent, utilities, if they have a only one vehicle and it's broke down and it's their primary vehicle to work, they can help with some funding to get that car repaired. When you do um, when you do funding, when you provide funding like that, is it a, a one time thing? I mean it, you, it's I don't want repeat people coming every month. It's a one time thing. Okay. Not saying that they can't come back for help, but there's more hoops that they have to jump through. Um, we provide some coaching and budgeting um, sessions, if you want to call it that, that um, 
we have somebody from Lexington that is in my office usually on Wednesday, Wednesdays if they have appointments and families can come in for budgeting. We offer that to all the families that come in or some coaching that helps them if they're needing help applying for um, DHHS or SNAP, Medicaid, you know, any of the services that they can get through DHHS. Um, we have someone that will help them fill out the paperwork. Um, it seems to be like if the Lexington office takes it, they're in the same building as DHHS. If they take it, that application in, it seems to get a little more attention than if the people try to do it on their own. And then they make sure that all the boxes are checked, all the paperwork that they need is there, and they because it can be a very lengthy and um, intimidating process for people that are needing the help. Um, so it kind of takes that fear factor away from the families and and they can follow up and they sign a paper so then our director, Amanda, can follow up and see where it's at in the process and if they're missing something, then she can help them. So that. she is in your office every Wednesday to do help herself or we have a fam we have finally got funding that we could hire a coach and her name is Sarah and she is either Amanda or Sarah that works on the Are they there at a certain time on Wednesdays? They just make appointments. So they're by appointment. Okay. So do they need to contact the Lexington office to make an appointment? Do they make an appointment with you? They can contact me and I can get them in contact with who they need to. But usually they'll contact me if they need help. If we've helped them before I say no, nope, I have to get you a hold of and the answer, Sarah, because we need, there's a few more to use. It's supposed to, you know, kind of get them through a rough patch, but not be, you know, not be something that they fall back on all the time. Okay. So that's all of our agencies. I think we picked them all. Um, I did bring, this is my budget hearing book. So every April, all of these agencies that we just talked about, they have to present an application, which they present to my budget hearing committee, and they are required to come in, and they have 15 minutes allotted to them, and they have to tell my committee what they're doing in COSET, how many people they've impacted in COSET, um, and how much money they'd like, how much money they would like, <laughs> and what they plan to do with that money. Okay. And they kind of have to show us what they did with the money before. All right, so let's talk about money for a little bit. How are you funded? How are we funded? Well, we're funded by the generosity of our community. You want to tell us a little bit about the fundraising that you're doing right now? Um, we send out campaign letters every year. Um, Is that sent out to like Businesses, individuals, prior donors, or prior you donors. Send it out to everybody who goes at it. Nope, it's usually prior donors and um, the businesses. Okay. And once you get on my list, it's pretty hard to get off of my list. Um, we, ju we just send them out and they, they send back if they want to donate. Um, we do have some fundraisers throughout the year. Right now, we're in the middle of our annual football pool fundraiser. Um, my board sells 100 numbers. And so you can't jump into this now because nope, it's already it's going. Already but going because next year, if you're started, interested, yes. yes. Yes, so tell us about this. Um, so we sell 100 numbers. The numbers cost $100 each. Uh, it's good for the entire football season. So if you break it down per game, it's $10 per game. So we, we bring in $10,000, we pay out $5,000 of that, and then the rest is um, yours into our campaign fund. But um, you can't do all this for just $5,000. No, we can't do all this for $5,000. <laughs> What's your goal? Our goal for, for 2025, because we, we fundraise a year ahead of time, so we're, we're actually raising money for 2025 right now. Um, because our agencies get paid 
in January, half of their funding for this year and half of it in July. Um, so we have to raise a year ahead of time. So our, our goal for next year is $75,000. So what happens if you don't get $75,000? If we don't get $75,000, then our agencies are made aware of the fact that if we make 95% of that, if we make 80% of that, whatever we said, okay, you get $5,000. Well, now that we've only made $95,000 or 95% of our goal, then you only get 95% of what we've said. Because you fundraise a year ahead of time. I mean, is that an ongoing fundraiser? So let's, you know, we start in January and we end in January. Okay. So any any donations so, that come in, even if they if they, they you get them on December thirty first, they're going to go into your twenty twenty five budget. If if it doesn't get to me by by right, December thirty first, bank, bank on December thirty first, uh -huh. going to. If it gets to you on January third, it goes into twenty twenty six. It will budget. Yes. It will. Yeah. I did not know that. We cut off at our board meeting in January. So if we have made our goal by then, it will go into 2026. And if it has, if you haven't made your goal, does it stay in 2025? It will stay in 2025. Okay. Yeah, that would be the only way that it would not go into the next year. Have you always hit your goal? That I'm aware of, we have always hit our goal. Um, for my curiosity, several years ago, I put together how much our goals were and how much was raised from those goals. And I have six years since the beginning that we haven't, I don't have, can't find any information on. So over those years, our goal was 2500000 Seventy-seven thousand seven hundred and forty-four dollars. Because one year they had a goal of thirty-nine thousand seven forty-four. So what year was that? That was nineteen ninety-one. Mm -hmm. um, so, in that same time frame, we've raised two million eight hundred thousand nine dollars and ten cents. So there were several years that they went over the goal. Has your goal increased every year? Um, other than the strange 1991? It, it kind of varies, but when Monroe was here, we had goals in the 80s, 80 to 90,000 range. Mm -hmm. um, and some of those years were raised over 100,000. Um, when Monroe left, we went down to like 60s some thousand so it has increased since Monroe's have left it has increased and we've we've seen a set steady increase and I would say since um, 2020 we've kind of seen a gradual increase every year um, and I don't know if that is from us living in that way and being independent or because some new donors have come on board since mm -hmm. then or? well you probably you have saved money by not paying to United Way. Well, as far as using our here United, United Way is a little unique because we have an endowment that we've had for years that we have invested. The charitable fund? Uh -huh. So you had to change that name, I would assume. No, the endowment didn't didn't change. The I mean, endowment wasn't changed. in United Way. No, it was that name. No. It just it the name changed when we changed, but um, that money that we've invested cruise interest and we've been lucky enough to be able to do all of our operating funds off of the interest um, that we make and um, so we have some CDs that are invested at the banks locally and then we have some mutual funds and stuff like that that have been invested so so when uh the so different even, than, even when we were United Way, we didn't pay our dues to United Way out of out, out of the campaign. campaign. 
Oh, out of the campaign? No. Okay. It's always been off of the end now. The board, even though the board members have changed, it's always been very important to the board for every dime that's raised, it stays on Cosette. That's great. And, mm -hmm. or it, I can't say that it stays in Cosette because some of our agents right. are out. But it serves Cosette. It serves Cosette. Yes. Um, when you were talking about money um, and the different organizations have to present, mm -hmm. are they always fully funded? For what they ask? Yes. Um, no. And for, you know, when you go to budget, I mean, I know I asked if you don't raise enough money, they're not funded, but are they always fully funded at what they asked? No. So I can tell you from, like, if I ask for $10,000, the likelihood of me getting that $10,000. So last year, our ask was 86400 And the committee felt comfortable with, we think we can raise 75000 so that's where they said. So then they have to have the hard conversation. Does this one get what they ask, or does everybody get cut down? Okay. And so then it's their um, whatever they decide. That's what we set as the goal, and then the board ultimately has to vote on what their record. Is. Would you say, Pam, that your goals are generally under what has been asked for typically typically yeah and if you make more than what your goal is is it kind of like if you make less that those organizations would come back and get a little more we have we have some excess funds in our campaign account that have kind of built up over the years for when we have made more than our goal. And so we do have a, a special funding request that the okay. um, agencies can come in and ask for. Like when Dawson County Family Partners started, <laughs> it was after we had our campaign goal. So she came in and asked for some money. So just to get us started and so that came from the special so that came from the special funding there was t there's times where the child care has needed money for helping with carpet or windows or a roof they come in and ask for some special funding um trying to think of some other i don't remember if we've done anything for the grand generation center but they can come in and ask for some special funding if there's a need mm -hmm. i've been really this conversation. The rest of you, do you have questions? I'm going to do a lot, yeah. even though I knew, I thought mm -hmm. I knew. Yeah, well, I think if you're interested, I can kind of tell you, I brought in some numbers of the number of people that were served over the last several years. Absolutely. Um, and I didn't put the years on here. I think I I think I printed them in order. So, um, so 2023, 20, there were 1,904 individuals served. And that's kind of a hard number to pin down because the food pantry gives me a number for the whole entire year. And so then I kind of try to have to figure out how many of those are just oh, individual families? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Or how many of those are repeats? Or repeats, mm -hmm. yeah, because a lot of them come back every month. Um, youth Rec, they say that they serve 600 children. Um, but some of those kids might play flag football and wrestling and swim team, you know, so some of those are repeats as well. Um, and this year, we, this. Um, here, some, well, I think this was overall parent child center because I didn't have a number. They served 2,200 people. So it shows that we served 4,300 people. So they didn't give me a number for just COSAD. They usually give a number for just Yeah, COSAD. I see what you're saying though, because like after zone, I could go once. 
right? I, I would be count served, but I could go every day all year long and I would still be counted once. Once. Yes. So that's yes, but they typically give me a number of how many kids they have enrolled. So mm -hmm. usually it's around 200. Yeah. But I'm just saying, you know, they're serving a hundred something a day. Yeah. Over the course of the year, you've impacted a lot more than just a hundred kids. Right. Right. Because they, they typically average a hundred to 106 every day. Um, and the food pantry, their numbers at the end of the year, are like, 900 over 900 over a thousand um that people have been, been impacted but some of those might be the same people mm -hmm. you know every month yeah but they they typically um before covid they would serve 40 families would be a big number um since covid that number has gradually gone up and typically they serve 90 to 100 families. So over um, doubled month. Mm -hmm. do you, does the charitable fund of COSA do anything for homeless? Um, there's not a whole lot we can refer them to Carney because there's not a whole lot we can do. Yeah. Not a whole lot. Um, or we can just give them numbers of places that they can call to see if they can get them in. But there's not a whole lot that we can do. Because there's no services around here. Close. Or right. Yeah, I was going to say, well, the emergency, but that's really for emergency medical that you just said. Yeah. They have the Jose, do you have any questions for Pam? Let me double check. I think she answered most of them. Let's see. Yeah, uh, all the questions I was going to ask, you were able to answer them. So, yeah, I think I got all the information I need for Perfect. the Clipper Arrow newspaper. Melanie, how about you? What time is the doc day presentation on Friday? It is at 9 o'clock Friday morning. Okay. And, then, and that's something we've partnered with you for over for 10 years. years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We used to do it. We've done it for a long time. And that just, I got to tell you about one more thing that we do as a community service. But we've done it for a long time. And before we partnered with you, we would go um, to like kindergarten, first and second, and give the kids books. And we had a partner. Um, they had, Barb was able to get books through a place in Lincoln, and then um, that kind of fell away, and then that's when we came and we partnered with you, so it worked out great with that program, but we've given books a long, long time. Yeah. Um, one other thing that we do, crazy phone calls, <laughs> um, so for years and years, before I was the director, I was on the board, so we've been doing it. I've been the director for seven years, and I was on the board for probably six years prior to that. But when we were United Way, we had to do a community service project every year in the community. And um, one year we decided we decided as a board that our community service project that year was going to be deliver groceries to people that are shut in. And that community service project never went away. So every Thursday, we work with Sunnies and the people who would like their groceries delivered to them call, usually by Wednesday, some of them don't call till Thursday, um, and we deliver groceries. Um, I have board members sign up and deliver groceries. So do they just go to Sunny's and pick up the they go bags? To, they go to Sunny's. Um, Sunny's does the shopping, has everything bagged, um, they into the brown paper yeah. bag, and they have their name written on them, and have it all ready to go, and then have a list of what the person ordered and how much they owe, 
and then my board member takes it to their house or their apartment or wherever, and then they take the money back to me to go through. So that's something that maybe we can partner with you. Um, we do an outreach program where people who are housebound can't get out that we deliver library books to them so they can read and Kim goes around and delivers the books. So maybe we can put a little flyer in oh, absolutely. with the yeah. groceries and make sure we're, yeah. we're, that information is getting out right. to people. Right. And um, you know, like some of the people over at the housing, mm -hmm. their cars were destroyed in a hailstorm, so now they're having their groceries delivered. We, we've been deliver up to Emerald to the assisted living. Yeah, sometimes I just think all of our organizations need to be able to communicate, know mm -hmm. each other, you know, like, right. the, you know, I don't know still how many people don't know that you can get a ride on the bus, on the, yes. the ride transit bus mm -hmm. that comes and will take you to North Platte, mm -hmm. Lexington. Mm -hmm. um, but even the Grand Generation Center yep. has a bus that they'll take you to places now too, so. Uh, I was going to ask, and I forgot, and you started talking about your board. Who's all on your board? That's what I wanted to um, ask of that. We have a board of 25 volunteers, <laughs> and they all serve from, um, we have members from each one of the banks, um, Nebraska Plastics, Paulson's, um, some of the insurance agencies, a lot of retired people on my board. I'm not going to try to name them all off. I didn't bring the list. Is it um, like an invitation to become on the board or if you're interested in serving on the board? If you're interested in serving on the board, we always um, take that. We go through a nomination process at the end of the year. And then people who are nominated come on the board. And then one of my board members will go visit with that person and say, hey, your name's come up. Would you like to serve on the board? And they kind of tell them. Um, and they're told from the get-go that it's a working board. Um, there's things that you're expected to do. Um, some people follow those guidelines, some don't. Um, but usually everybody does something that fits into their, their, their life or their work schedule or whatever. Um, how, what, what's the term? Or three know, years. Three years. Unless we have somebody that um, retires or gets off early for some reason, um, then usually it's three years. Sometimes we fill in like a one or two year term and we'll say, hey, your first term's only going to be one year and then you're going to be on for another three years. So I was, that was my that, second you know, question is, can you do like back to back terms or is that you? No, we have no term limits. No term limits. No term limits. <laughs> So, um, Shirley Harkness was on um, for Years. a long, long time until she couldn't serve anymore. We need to count on Shirley being there for a uh, Shirley was actually also really instrumental in like the, the blood draws. Do you guys, the, does the charitable fund of COSA do anything when the Red yeah. Cross comes in? No, we don't do anything. They used to be one of our agencies and they had an office in our building, but. Mm -hmm. Um, the Red Cross decided not to have it. Yeah, yeah, I think the closest one's in Carney now, isn't it? Yeah. So, no, we don't do anything. Yeah. Um, so, Melanie, I, I took over your question, but no, do you that have any other more? Any other questions? I might get that list for me. Though. Absolutely. Um, are you going to be at um, Give Big Cozad in November? Yes, we will. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you have a specific um, thing that you're going to be fundraising, or it's just your your general just our general goal. Yeah. Uh, what is something that you wish every person in Cosette knew about charitable fundraising? I just wish that they knew the impact on our community that their donation makes. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have a Facebook page. Do you have a website? We do not. We do not. Okay. And what are your hours? Like if people wanted to come, to obviously Wednesday, you're there. Um, typically, I'm there um, Monday and Wednesday afternoons and Tuesday and Thursday mornings. But I can be there by appointment if they need to come in for like assistance with utilities. Um, 
Dr. Young is one of my board members, and so he has magically worked the landline to to bring to my oh. cell phone twenty four seven and my email to my phone twenty four seven. So um, I'll have to do this call. Preferably not in the middle of the night. Um, if they call in the middle of the night, I don't answer. <laughs> but it has happened. It has happened. Okay, I remember when someone used to come visit at school and you could designate um, certain agencies that yes, we you still, still offer do that. Offer mm -hmm. that option. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, on our, our campaign, their donation form that they fill out and say, my name, address, this is what I want to donate. There's a spot on the bottom. If so if you wanted to donate $100, you could divvy that up. Yeah, and all of, our, all of our agencies are listed on the back. And you know some of the community service things that are listed on the back. What else do you do for community service? So you said that the groceries never groceries went away. Do you do went. other community service projects, or that's really it? That's I was thinking you guys did something where, and maybe this is part of your fundraising that people bought tickets and then they had like a a dine, not a dine and dash, a shop and dash through Sunnies. Um, we have done that in a shopping spree. We didn't do it last year. But is that part of your fundraising? That's part of our fundraising, yeah. And yeah, we were at a music Monday. Monday. And sure. we did music Monday. Mm -hmm. We did a uh, hamburger hot dog mm -hmm. did music Monday for one of our fundraisers. And well, I think I've seen you at, at basketball games too, maybe. We usually try to um, do a split the pot or something fun at some of the home games just to kind of get our name out there. And, um, those don't raise a whole lot of money, but it's just awareness. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we are doing, we usually do a casino night in the fall. Um, the board has chosen to go a different route this year. Um, so put it okay. on your calendar October 12th, which is just right around the corner. See, I'm glad we kept talking. Yes. yes. I forgot all about it. Where um, we are going to do a trivia night with the Ask and Nebraska. And um, we're still kind of working on the details and working with him on that. Um, so get a team together and plan to come down with the Elks that night. Uh, the three banks have agreed to provide hors d'oeuvres and appetizers for the evening. Um, if you want something to drink, you're going to have to buy your own. Is, so that's at the Elks? At the Elks. Yeah. And Berrigman and Masada Law Firm has agreed to pay the fee for the Ask in Nebraska. So we will have some live and silent auctions that night for some gift baskets that we can get donated. Our community is so amazing. And how much they donate last year at our casino night, we were able to raise over $13,000. That's great. Well, I think. Uh, you guys had because last year was the COSAD 150th. You have the whiskey glasses. That was, yeah, was it last year? It was just yeah. last year, yeah. It seemed like that was a couple years ago. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, but we did, we did um, whiskey glasses with the 150th logo on them. We had them available for sale. And then we also, to make it fun, we had. Um, they could buy a whiskey glass and then um, for extra money, and then they could get like four or five. Oh, like whiskey tasting? Whis whiskey tastings. Nice. Yeah. So, when will we see um, marketing materials out about the trivia? We're still working on all the details, and I, I have a flyer ready to go out, and then. The committee's like, but wait a minute, but wait a minute, but wait a minute. So hopefully by next week. Next week. Okay. Yeah. What else have we missed in asking you questions that you want us to know? We pretty much hit all the highlights that I had in Minnesota. Well, we thank you. Yeah. See, it wasn't that terrible. It wasn't that terrible. No, no. <laughs> when I say chat, I mean chat. Back and forth, questions and answers. Yeah. Um, I hope that everybody that's here has learned something about what we do and why we do it. Yeah. I. Um, this is terrible of me. I didn't bring my newsletter in. I have no idea off the top of my head who our community chat is next month. 
that's how crazy it's been at the library. But we sure uh, appreciate you coming in today and talking to us. And as always, uh, you can stop in the library and see what's going on. We have a lot of things. A lot of things going on.